on It's Supernatural. See how rain supernaturally falls in the middle of a severe drought. And how signs from heaven transform a nation. Can ancient secrets of the supernatural be rediscovered? Do angels exist? Is there life after death? Are healing miracles real? Can you get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 30 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest, Jennifer Toledo, had an experience. Jennifer, uh, this is so phenomenal. You were in Africa uh, in a remote village uh, and you were about ready to die. And you had a mysterious guest come in and perform surgery from the invisible world. But at two years of age, you had an encounter with the Messiah of Israel. Tell me about that. Yeah, I was um, just a young child. I was scared, you know, and would cry at night. And one night I had an experience where I just saw Jesus come into my room. And he just sat on my bed and, and he just said, you don't need to cry. And he said, I'll, you know, I'll take care of you. And he just sat there and it just brought absolute peace to me. My parents were shocked because I was screaming and then I just suddenly stopped and came running out and was like, did you guys see Jesus? And they were like, what in the world is she yeah. talking about? Yeah, yeah, you know, if that if I had had such an encounter, as you described, my mind would go back to it often over mm -hmm. the years. Does yours? Yeah, I think more than my mind, it's my heart. Just that place of peace of, I remember just that peace of him sitting there next to me and what I felt of just absolute confidence. And he, I went to sleep and I just commonly can go there and just remember him sitting next to my bed whenever I'm stressing out or whatever and knowing that he's just looking after me. And your mom got a divorce mm -hmm. uh, when you were young and you watched God perform miracles. For instance, tell me about the red car. Oh my goodness. My mom taught us from a young age that God was our father and just to really treat him like our father and and go to him with our needs and just very practically he's not just theory but he's a real dad and um, you know one time we didn't have a car and my mom used to make us stand with her at the window and she would look out into the driveway and she'd say do you, do you see my red car sitting there and we'd like make fun of her and we'd be like what are you <laughs> talking about mom there's no red car and and she'd just say oh just have faith I just know that God's gonna provide us a car and and she goes, and I, I told God, you know, my first choice is a red car. And we were like, okay, Mom. And um, sure enough, um, a short time later, there was a knock on our door. We went and opened the door, and it was a relative we hadn't seen in a long time. And they said, you know, this is going to sound crazy, but we've never done anything like this, but we just feel like we're to give you our car. I told my mom this. And my mom was like, oh, my goodness. And we ran to the window, and we looked, and parked in our driveway is this red car that they had given How my excited mom. were you? We were so excited. We were like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, God's so good. He I, I mean, but God provided food and all sorts of things. And then yeah. there was a day in which you journaled a, almost a warning from God. Tell me about that in your diary. Yeah, I, um, you know, just one of my times of just praying, I, I began to just feel God speaking to my heart, and he just said, um, you know, I, I'm inviting you on this crazy mission, this crazy adventure with me. It's going to be very costly. It's going to be very lonely. It's going to be very hard. It's going to cost you everything. But if you will say yes to my, my highest for you, you know, putting down what's comfortable to really pursuing what's on his heart, if you'll do that, this is about spiritual promotion. This is about gaining authority. It's going to be worth it. Okay, so you get on a plane to go to Africa. <laughs> How much money did you have? Who went with you? What kind of preparation <laughs> did you have? Um, negative, negative, and negative. I had no How does, money. A, how does a young woman like that go to Africa alone without money? How? No, it's it's. Give me a break. Absolutely. What did your mother say? <laughs> My mother was freaking out, um, hands down. But I knew God had had said to do this. I knew this was the invitation, 
And I went by myself. I was 21 years old. I had no money. I had very few connections and ended up in、um, northern Kenya, very remote desert, all by myself. And the, the surroundings there were horrific. I mean, it was drought, war, famine, you know, violence, death. It was crazy, Sid. It was absolutely crazy, but I knew it was God. And、uh, you found out. Uh, that it was such a spiritual desert. It was、yeah. because the Turkana tribe had made a covenant with Satan thousands of years ago. Right. You know, when I thought it really couldn't get worse, I realized that, that the entire tribe was in blood covenants with Satan. And I just cried and was like, What am I doing here? I'm just nobody. You know, why in the world? What, am, what can I do? I'm totally inadequate. And God spoke to me and said, You know what? You are completely inadequate. Don't forget, that's your greatest strength. And then he asked me an interesting question. He said, Do you believe that I'm the God that uses David to bring down Goliath? And that was, you know, in other words, do you believe that I can use simple people to do great things? It's about me, it's not about you. And I was like, Okay, God, I know that you love these people and I know you want to bring restoration to this land. So we began to just pray and ask God for, for strategy for that land. All right, so God gives you a supernatural strategy, but with the strategy comes a warning. What、yes. was the warning? Well, God had given us a strategy to see breakthrough come.、Um, but Basically, he, in a nutshell,、yeah. what was the strategy? The strategy was to gather all the leaders together of the tribe and、um, have them corporately repent and, and break the covenant with the enemy. But what he said was the, way, the only way out of this blood covenant is that the tribe has to enter into a stronger blood covenant. And the only stronger blood covenant is covenants with Jesus. And, and what so, was the warning that you got? So the warning I got was God said, This is. Awesome, I want you to do this, but knowing if you do, the enemy has asked to take your life. Satan is very angry, doesn't want these people out of bondage, and wants to take your life. And I didn't know what that meant, other than I knew it was serious.、Um, I really prayed about it, and I just I said, Okay, God, Satan can't steal my life. I will lay my life down for this tribe if this is what you've sent me to do, but my life is in your hands. I trust you. And,、um, but 24、yeah. hours later, she finds herself. Dying in a remote village with no, no, no medical help, nothing, alone in the middle of Africa. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Are you weary, discouraged, afraid of never living out your dreams or fulfilling your purpose in life? Are you tired of praying for a miracle and never seeing results? You are a phone call away from receiving your breakthrough. Call now to get your copy of Jennifer Toledo's life changing audio teaching CD titled The Missing Key to Your Breakthrough for a donation of only $16. Shipping and handling is free. Ask for offer number 1239. This anointed teaching will give you a supernatural impartation of faith to confront adversity and obtain the promise. Of God for you and your ministry. Through this powerful teaching, you will learn how to see through God's eyes so you can live victoriously, receive your spiritual promotion, and begin to walk in supernatural authority. Discover how to have radical faith to believe God for healings, miracles, and even seeing the dead raised to life. Experience breakthroughs in every area of your life, whether it's your marriage, family, job, health, or finances, and so much more. On this CD, Jennifer prays a special prayer of impartation and anointing to stay. Stand, press into God and receive your miracle. Don't miss out on getting your copy of Jennifer Toledo's life changing audio teaching CD titled The Missing Key to Your Breakthrough for a donation of only $16. Shipping and handling is free. Ask for offer number 1239. Call now or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1239 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Jennifer Toledo. And so, Jennifer, you're in the middle of nowhere in Africa.、Uh, you're dying and you're breaking a covenant that's been thousands of years with Satan that, that has stopped people from coming to know God in that particular region.、Uh, you're dying, but you, per- you, you proceed. They break the covenant. By forming a stronger covenant, the covenant with God through Jesus.、Mm-hmm. Uh, and what changes occurred after that covenant was broken in that region? You said it was absolutely incredible.、Um, we actually did this at the peak of the drought, the m- middle of the summer. It's like 110 to 120 degrees. It was so hot and 
um, just, you know, just the conditions in that land were so horrific. And we said, not only are the people going to come into covenants, but we're going to call the land into covenants. And so to symbolize this, we all, we took communion, we poured communion on the land and, and we said, okay, you know, we did everything God told us to do. It was very simple. Um, and they said, God, we, we really need two signs. Would you just let us know you're pleased, sign your name to this deal, something. And two, would you give us a sign that you've really brought down the demonic stronghold in this land? And um, sure enough, we got our signs. It was like living through a Bible story. It was so incredible. Tell me, tell me you had several signs. Tell me one of yeah, them. Yeah, one of them was um, it, all of a sudden, middle of the summer, the heavens literally open and it starts to pour down rain. Never happens. Oh my goodness. It hadn't rained in so long. I mean, you have to tell an African that rain means God's pleased. You know, I mean, they, they knew God was in this. And then it began to, this bolt of lightning struck this mountain, Goat Mountain. And that was the high point of all the demonic power. It was where they did all these sacrifices and God struck the mountain and, and you could feel something shift in the land. And then it was almost instantly we began to see, see things um, change. We had um, some friends that, that were from the Turkana tribe, and um, they had a curse put on them that all their children would die at birth. And just so happened, she was three weeks overdue from delivering a, another baby. And um, they had lost several babies, and so they were just devastated. But as soon as we did everything God told us to do, and the curse was broken, um, she went into labor. And everybody kind of stood by to see if, you know, this was going to really bring change. And sure enough, she delivered a perfectly healthy baby girl. Her, and they, uh, the, the father held the baby up in front of the tribe and said, her name is Peace. She'll have no middle name, no last name. Her name is Peace. And she'll be a prophetic sign to us that on this day we came into peace with the living God. And then from that moment, like, we just saw a crazy transformation in the land. It began to rain, record rainfalls. Um, the violence level completely diminished. Um, it was people started getting saved. It was like just you know, an I open love, heaven. I love what occurred, but what about you? You are dying in this remote <laughs> yeah, I village. A, great time. <laughs> a, a, a guy by the name of Randy transports you. Uh, how many miles away to a I hospital? It was out, six, about sixteen hours away. I mean, to a you hospital. were dying. Yes, I had been given about twenty-four hours to live. Um, and this precious man found me, drove me sixteen hours to a hospital got to the hospital, they said basically um, it was a miracle that I was alive. All my organs would shut down, I had severe dehydration and um, was very sick. I needed, they said I needed an instant surgery and um, I was just like, no way, you know, and, and I just started, something rose up inside of me and, and said, no, I know that my God can heal me. I've seen God move, I've seen him heal. He loves me. He's a pastor gave you an encouraging prophecy yeah. too that helped. Tell That's me true. About that. As I was lying in the hospital, hooked up to all these machines, miserable, in pain, um, so incredible. This man walks into my room, this Kenyan pastor. I've never seen him before. He introduces himself and says, um, you, know, you don't know who I am, but the Lord woke my wife and I up last night and told us to pray for you and told me to come and give you a word. And I'm going, thank you. I want it right now. <laughs> and, um, and he said, you know, the word is very simple. He said this, and he just pointed to me and my condition, and he said, God wants me to remind you, this right here, this is about spiritual promotion. This is about gaining authority. And it was the exact words God had told me, and I'd written in my journal before I left. I love it when I God know. does something so like fun. that. He knew I needed that because... I mean, here you are. Okay, you're, but you're still, you're encouraged by dying in yes. the hospital. <laughs> so my and... heart was better. <laughs> my body wasn't better yet. Um, but it did give me the faith just to go, you know what? I know God can do this. I'm going to press in. And I, I know that in the middle of difficulties, choosing faith and choosing to believe his promises is that thing that pushes you through and gives you authority. And it's the thing that breaks you okay, in. Okay, so, well, uh, this good friend of yours shows up in a dream. Tell yes. me about him. Um, I, I fall asleep. And um, while I'm asleep, I have the most incredible encounter. I don't know how to explain it other than it was like the most beautiful kindest light and I knew it was Jesus walked into my hospital room and he took the back of his hand and he said be still and he just cut me right down the middle with his hand and pulled my skin open and I was kind of honestly it was so real it was like watching surgery on TV I was like this is gross you know but it was it was so incredible and one by one he just began to massage my organs and he cleaned me out and did all this stuff and then he took my skin and closed it back up in his hand he had my exact skin color it was like clay or mud and he put it on top of me and I was thinking oh my gosh I'm not gonna have a scar and and I was awakened in that moment and honestly when I woke up 
I was still in total pain. Oh, no. I know. I didn't feel any different. And I was like, no. And I just had to make a choice. And I said, I know God's character. God is not the kind of God that would tease me. I have nothing to lose at this point. So I have to believe I'm healed. So I just was like, I'm healed. I'm healed. And, and my doctor was in the room, thought I was totally crazy. And was like, you're not healed. You're actually dying. You know. And, but what happened was when I said, I'm healed, it was like supernatural strength came into my body. And it was when I made that agreement with who he is. And I couldn't stop. I was just like, I'm healed, I'm healed. I just kept <laughs> screaming because it was like every time I said it, I was feeling better. I mean, it had been 10 days of extremely ill, unable to eat. So when you walk out of that hospital, what does the staff and doctors oh, say I mean, or think? So many of the doctors and the nurses were just in tears. They were so moved. Many of them um, received Jesus as their savior because it was... It was, how could you not believe that Jesus could heal? How, I mean, they saw, they saw I was dying. They saw, they retested everything. All my normals, my, my, my levels were completely normal. My organs were functioning just fine. It was medically undefined. And so all the credit went to God. It was incredible. And I was completely healed. Uh, you think that's incredible. Wait till you find out how Jennifer brings a few suitcases of clothing to Africa and it, the clothing keeps multiplying. She gives away the clothes and more clothes are in the suitcase. I mean, that, that sounds like what I read about in the Bible. Don't no, go away. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. One new man. The convergence of Jews and Gentiles. The two becoming one new man in Yeshua. When Jews and Christians become one new man in Messiah Jesus, we will experience a move of God such as the world has never seen. If you want to experience an explosive outpouring of God's Spirit, God's love, God's power, then log on to www.sidroth.org to learn more about the one new man. We now return to It's Supernatural! Amazing. This is Sid Roth with Jennifer Toledo. This is an amazing story. You go to Africa because you have a heart for children and you have eight suitcases jam packed with clothing for children. Tell me what happened. We took eight suitcases into Rwanda and um, we thought, well, let's just pick. We didn't have that much. I mean, how much can you take in eight suitcases? We thought, let's pick the worst scenarios. And, and we got about 100 children in Rwanda and we thought, well, if we can at least give them each something. And we laid all the clothes out and we brought in these orphans that were just in these horrible conditions. Each child left with huge bag loads full of clothing and shoes and school supplies. And we were like, that's amazing. It lasted for all these kids, you know. And sure. so we were shocked that eight suitcases would give, eight, you know, 100 children a huge bag. But hmm. the crazy thing is we still had a ton of stuff left over. And we we're like, how, how could that? you? Though? I know. How is that possible? So we brought in more kids. And we just started finding all the street kids, the kids that we knew needed stuff, and we just kept bag loads we were giving away. Well, we still had a ridiculous amount of stuff, and we are like, I can't believe this. So we ended up taking it in to Kenya. That's where we are going next. And we went into the slums in Kenya, and we, we gathered as many children as we could that were in need. And each child, same thing, got these huge bags, and it was like amazing, designer label clothing. We are like, I never saw this when I packed it. It was just... This incredible clothes. These kids, but they walked right out of a magazine. It was so extravagant, and they had all this stuff. And but yet, it still wouldn't. We couldn't get rid of it. I mean, there would be times where I literally, I had looked in a bag. I knew there were no shoes left, and a child would say, "Oh, but I'm size five, and I really want a shoe." And I just say, "Let's just pray." We pray, dig our hands in, size five shoes. And we're like, "I can't believe this!" It was so cool. Well, that was just the beginning. I mean, we literally could not get rid of this stuff. It just kept multiplying. These eight suitcases. So if you'd we, only known, you would have brought one suitcase. I know, no, I know. I wanted mean, to carry all eight. <laughs> Seriously. So we went out throughout, throughout Kenya, and we started distributing this stuff. We thought, this is ridiculous. We were getting ready to leave, so we've got, we've got to get rid of this stuff. We started taking garbage bags full of this clothing. Every single orphanage in the whole county we were in got garbage bags full of clothing, and we could not get rid of it. We started taking it to the hospitals. We started going to the churches. Just people, come get clothes for your kids. It never ended. I'm telling you, it went on and on and on. You think that's amazing. <laughs> Guess what happens when she gets home with those it's true. suitcases? We fully like dumped them out, and we were like, ah, oh, we've got to go home. You know, it was the day we were leaving. When I got home, I started going through my bag, 
there was clothes that had appeared in my bag, children's clothing, all in my suitcase. I'm thinking it came home with us. Like it just, we couldn't get rid of it. It was amazing. And it just showed me God loves the orphan. God loves the, the needy, the broken. And he's such an extravagant father. And it was so fun to watch him do that. Well, speaking of children, uh, tell me in Ecuador about the woman that went uh, 15 years not yeah. being able to be pregnant. This is such a sweet story. Um, there is this, this woman in, in a church that we work with who had been un unable to get pregnant, was very grieved, obviously, and, and um, we ministered to her, and she was healed. And we got the report a couple weeks later that she was pregnant. We were so excited. And um, a, just over a year later, we went back to Ecuador to visit, and she had had a baby, and the baby was just a newborn, like three months old or so. And um, we get a phone call from them, and they said, something tragic's happened. The baby got this lung infection, is in the hospital, the baby's now in a coma, there's been severe brain damage, and they don't expect the baby to live. And we were like, absolutely not. This is your blessing from God, and God's going to heal your baby. And so we begin to send... I like your ferocious <laughs> faith. Yeah, you really, I mean... You really believe God. You know, it's true. I mean, why why doubt him? He's real, and, and it's his, his promises are true. And so... We just take him at his word, and we just get to watch him do amazing things. And so we begin to go to the hospital and our team and, and minister. Um, and the first time we went, um, we went into the waiting room. You know, it's, the baby was in, in um, critical care, so you really couldn't go to the baby. But we were in the waiting room, and there was two families in there. The family we'd come to minister to, and then also an, an unsafe family we'd never met before. And as we walk into the hospital, we hear the father of this family telling how he's going to murder the doctor. And he's, they're enraged, they're angry. Their nine-month-old baby boy has the exact same condition as this little girl we're going to pray for. Mm -hmm. And in a coma, brain damage, same thing. And we say, you know, can we just minister to this family first? And they're like, of course. And so we begin to just pray for this little boy of this family. And um, as we're praying, just our, our team just begins to just weave an intercession and just cry out to God for this child's life. About 15 minutes into it, the doctor comes out and says, something crazy just happened. The little boy just came out of the coma. That's not possible. <laughs> and we're like, oh, my goodness. So the, of course, the family is just ecstatic. And, and um, they're like, this is, this is your God. Who is your God? And we said, it's Jesus. You know, and Jesus can heal. And so the whole family, seven of them, pray to receive Christ. They receive Christ as their Savior. We're standing there praying. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit comes on them. They begin to shake. They begin to just have open visions. Our team was like, this is crazy. We weren't even asking for this. And, and they begin to hear God's voice. They see angels. It was an incredible encounter. But um, the father of the family had a vision where he saw that God was going to give um, both babies a brand new brain. And so they begin to say, we're going to believe God for because this. Because the doctors believed that they had uh, Oh, yeah, coma, the, the they damage. Had... They had come out, the baby, the one baby had come out of a coma, but still had severe brain damage. And, um, and so that night the family went to sleep in the hospital and woke up because the father heard a voice. And the voice said, get up, go home, bathe, eat, rest, whatever, and bring your family back tomorrow. You're going to get good news. So he just did what he was, what he was told. Went home, came back the next day go in to see the baby, there's a red mark on the baby's head. And they're like, what happened? And um, the nurses are all kind of nervous because he'd been, you know, very angry before. And, and he, they said, we don't, we don't know. That, that line appeared in the night on his head. He said, I want all the testings for my son right now. And they retested everything. They said, this isn't possible. He has completely normal brain function. It's like he has a brand new brain. Do, do you believe he had supernatural f surgery? I do. I mean, how bizarre that there was even a mark on his head, you know? And here's the greatest thing. I love how God does yeah, this. Yeah, but what about that other baby? Exactly. He's so fun. And, and, you know, that other baby hadn't been healed yet. But we just kept believing. And, and I went in and, and got to pray for that baby. And when I went in there, it was incredible. It was like I could hear angels singing around her. And I just, I just began to just pray over her and sing over her. And um, we got the report the next day. She also came out of the coma. And the parents were like, if God did it for that other baby, he's going to do it for our baby. And they said, we want to see complete brain restoration. I mean, when you're, that doesn't happen outside of a miracle. And retested her brain completely brand new, perfectly fine. Both babies released from the hospital, completely normal, completely healed. You know, Jennifer, I have to tell you, I listened personally to your CD, The Missing Key to Your Breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And you have a gift to have someone hold on 
because the breakthrough is about ready to happen. And Jennifer identifies the missing key, but there's actually a presence of God on your teaching that you will be able to hold on. For Some of you are discouraged. It's going to make a total difference in your life. But I have to tell you, do you remember that in Kenya, Jennifer broke the covenant that was made with Satan, with a higher covenant with God through Jesus? Well, every woman that is born has born into a covenant with Satan because of the original sin of Adam and Eve. But the good news is there's a higher covenant. Mm -hmm. There is a higher covenant than the one that was made with the devil. And you can be set free totally from that covenant with the devil. And you can have a new father. Jennifer has a father that she can trust. His name is God. And he's not a man that he should lie. And he says, I love you. And I sent Jesus to die in your place to make a new covenant so that you could enter into abundance and life and peace and joy and purpose and destiny and a future and hope. I mean, it gets so good. I could go on and on and on. But I tell you, if you tell Jesus you're sorry for your sins and believe the blood of Jesus washes away your sins, make Jesus your Lord. Just say it with your mouth now, now, right now. Are you weary, discouraged, afraid of never living out your dreams or fulfilling your purpose in life? Are you tired of praying for a miracle and never seeing results? You are a phone call away from receiving your breakthrough. Call now to get your copy of Jennifer Toledo's life-changing audio teaching CD titled The Missing Key to Your Breakthrough for a donation of only $16. Shipping and handling is free. Ask for offer number 1239. This anointed teaching will give you a supernatural impartation of faith to confront adversity and obtain the promise of God for you and your ministry. Through this powerful teaching, you will learn how to see through God's eyes so you can live victoriously, receive your spiritual promotion, and begin to walk in supernatural authority. Discover how to have radical faith to believe God for healings, miracles, and even seeing the dead raised to life. Experience breakthroughs in every area of your life, whether it's your marriage, family, job, health, or finances, and so much more. On this CD, Jennifer prays a special prayer of impartation and anointing to stay Stand, press into God and receive your miracle. Don't miss out on getting your copy of Jennifer Toledo's life-changing audio teaching CD titled The Missing Key to Your Breakthrough for a donation of only $16. Shipping and handling is free. Ask for offer number 1239. Call now or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1239 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. If you are encouraged and helped by these television programs, please consider assisting us with future productions. Send your tax-deductible gift to Sid Roth, Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia, 31521. Call toll-free 1-800-548-1918 or visit our website at SidRoth.org. 